Wow, everything going uh, haywire here uh, in the uh, broadcast booth, the early going. But from Lasher Park on the campus of UMass Lowell in Lowell, Mass, this is MIA Baseball here on LSP. Tonight, it's the Medford Mustangs taking on the Reading Rockets in non-league action in this uh, special <coughs> Patriots Day showcase here at UMass Lowell. Sam Feely here with you, and it is now 1-1 one one to the Medford leadoff hitter, Mike Piccolo. Uh, encountered some... Uh, uh, connection difficulties right approaching first pitch. I know uh, it's uh, a little frustrating, but uh, folks, uh, uh, I would I promise you we are getting this uh, all fully recorded and everything, and uh, hopefully you folks find your way over here uh, in the uh, near future. Another foul ball. It'll be uh, one and two now to Piccolo. Medford in blue, Redding in white. And it is Michael Bayless getting the start for the Reading Rockets, coming off a 2-0 loss last time out. Both the games they've played so far have been shutouts, a 10-0 win over Stoneham their last time, uh, their first game before being blanked by Belmont. 2-0 in their last game. That's a routine ground out 4-3 as Jack Chapin makes the play, throwing onto the first baseman. Isaac Robinson. So Piccolo is retired, and here is Dave Crohan, the first baseman for the Mustangs. Again, sorry about all the uh, issues with the uh, broadcast, but uh, we are back live, and uh, it is ball one now to Crohan. Medford got no hit. Uh, against Somerville in their what is now official season opener. But it was a 3-1 loss. Uh, did get the leadoff man on in the bottom of the seventh, but I had ruled it a base hit, but it was in fact an error by the Highlanders that allowed uh, Joe Terrazio, the catcher, who is uh, batting seventh in today's line for the Mustangs, get, that allowed him to get on base, eventually score the only run for the Mustangs, that 3-1 Somerville victory that got the Highlanders to 3-0 and and ended up being a combined no-hitter as this is fouled the other way and out of play for strike two to Dave Crohan. 0-2 so, oh the start on the season after a loss to Woburn last time out for the Mustangs. Uh, and that includes a suspended game against Revere. That was 3-3 in the eighth before that was suspended due to darkness, and uh, that will have to be completed next time the Mustangs and the Patriots face off in uh, in uh, greater Boston League play. Obviously, if you're you know on the precipice of picking up a win there, potentially, going to extra innings against a league rival, you hate to have that game suspended and stall your momentum. This will be ground the other way toward short. Nice little sliding stop of the throw out of first. Great play. Will Moore with the fine defense there. And it's two up, two down here on the top of the first for the Rockets. Michael Bayless. Get through the first two batters, a couple of ground outs, and here's Lombardo, right fielder for the Mustangs. And I'll take high for ball one. If you're watching the uh, introductions during uh, the uh, first attempt at live streaming this game before we had to start over for the uh, for the actual game, uh, as the players are being introduced, you notice there's a lot of sophomores on the Medford roster that's inside ball two. Good number of sophomores on the Reading roster, though, including Alex Merkel, who's the Rockets' number three hitter, uh, Nate Vitterisi, Sam Clark, Grady Ventura, Isaac Robinson, and Jonathan Lorino. But mu much of the production in the lineup comes from upperclassmen for the Rockets. As will be floated down the right field line and it'll land foul for strike one to Jack. I know this is not the uh, ideal spot for... Uh, See where those balls go down the foul line. That's where it landed, and I'm sure it was a foul ball. And Jack will have to start all over again. Uh, 
Two and one the count. We'll start off our who you got poll uh, in a little bit uh, between innings, and hopefully I can uh, – See, we, uh, if, uh, you know, folks who are trying to watch the game and see that uh, the original stream link is dead, you can share this link with them. And it's accessible from uh, from the main page as well. Three and one the count. And uh, Medford hoping to get a two-out base runner here in the top of the first here on Patriots Day, Marathon Monday, Tax Day, Jackie Robinson Day, whatever you want to call April 15th. Three one the count. Chance will be fouled off. And the count will fill. As a reminder that the chat is subscribers only to prevent uh, spam bots from uh, weaseling their way in. But don't worry, subscribing is free. See the membership stuff, uh, that is paid but optional. Gets you some nice uh, uh, discounts on uh, merch at the LSP Spring Store. And there's other ways to support LSP uh, down the line. And we'll get to those between innings, and that's on the outside corner for strike three called. First strike out of the game for Michael Bayless. And one, two, three, go the Mustangs. In the top of the first, Mustangs nothing. Rockets coming up. Advertising opportunities are available on LSP. Sponsor our content for as little as $25 a spot. Whether you want to promote a business, product, or event, or send a message of support to a player, team, or coach, email yours truly, samfeelypbp at gmail.com for all the deets. That would be my wife in the chat, by the way, folks. Uh, and Tina is our dog, our, gr our uh, greyhound, our 40-mile-per-hour couch potato, our 70-pound sleep paralysis demon, whatever you want to call it. Love you, Katrina. Love you, Tina. <laughs> All right. Uh, I do have the full batting orders for both teams. We'll get to we'll – I'll give you those in just a moment. It'll be Ryan Slow uh, getting the start on the mound for the Mustangs. And Will Moore to lead things off for the Reading Rockets. Slow the lefty will miss down and in for ball one. Moore the shortstop for the Rockets. Fine sliding defensive play in the top of this inning. Takes on the outside corner for strike one. As I mentioned, uh, the Rockets coming off a 2-0 loss to uh, Belmont last time out. Before that, a 10-0 win over Stoneham. That'll be fouled off, and the count will be 1-2 and two to the Reading leadoff hitter. One, two from slow. Here it is. Just missed up and away for ball two to even the count. More entering play at uh, 286, two for seven to begin the season with one run scored and one RBI. He pops this one up over to the left side of the Third base line, and making the catch is the catcher, Joe DeRazio, for out number one. Well, 
I'll bring up the designated hitter, Nate Vitarisi. So it's Will Moore, shortstop, Nate Vitarisi, the DH, and Alex Merkel, the center fielder. Leading things off here in the bottom of the first for the Rockets. We'll give you the full line for both teams in just a moment. That'll be just a little high for ball one. Vitarisi enters play one for seven on the season with a run scored. He smacks this one into left field, and that'll hang up long enough for the left fielder, Carson Mangan, to make the catch. Nice sound off the bat, but just a line, line drive straight to the left fielder, and two up, two down for slow. And here is the center fielder, Alex Merkel. Sophomore, 5'9", buck 70, center fielder, bats and throws righty. And the team's leading hitter, two for four in five plate appearances with a run, a triple, and an RBI in the early going this season. He is behind 0-1. That'll be up and away for ball one. Fouled off the other way, the count will be one and two. Uh, Redding saw their postseason run last season come to an end at the hand of St. Mary's. Medford did not make the postseason last year, and that'll be high for ball two. It's a tough non-conference schedule for Medford. A lot of uh, teams that qualify for the postseason last year, unfortunately the Mustangs did not do so themselves. But a swing and a miss. Kind of an awkward one there too by Merkel, but Slow picks up his first K, so both pitchers get, the, get through the uh, first inning. One, two, three, and we are scoreless after one. When I say LSP has something for everyone since 2011, I by God mean it. Sports, live events, pet sitting and walking, tech help, errands, and more. Find all the details on our services on our Thumbtack page and through Linktree LSP37, or you can email yours truly, samfeelypbp at gmail.com, so we can proceed to give you what you need.
Justin Marino to lead things off here in the top of the second for the Mustangs. Swings at the first pitch and fouls it off for strike one. Woo! Hit off the, uh, sounds like a hit off the facing of the uh, press box. And uh, good thing he didn't come straight towards us. We do have the protective netting behind home plate, but that doesn't prevent balls from getting over. And uh, I have worked a number of fields where, actually, <laughs> last summer, as that's upstairs for ball one. Last summer, I was doing PA for a showcase down at uh, Rhode Island College. And um, a, yeah, they have a screen like this behind home plate, but a ball got, you know, foul ball got over the screen. That's laced in the left field for a base hit, the first base hit of the ball game for either side. And just Marino provides it for Meffa. So one up, uh, leadoff man aboard now for the Mustangs. And here is John Wright, who pitched a complete game in that no hit loss to Somerville. Allowed three runs in what struck out uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten batters in that game. A great uh, outing by John, but it was not enough. As oh, did that hit him or did that go off the handle of the bat? It took a funny ricochet in the direction of the Medford dugout either way, but it looks like it was a foul ball and it's a strike one. Remember, kids, if you swing at a pitch that hits you, it's a strike. <laughs> but, um, and, uh, y y yeah, any of my online opponents in MLB The Show would know that. <laughs> Sometimes it's really hard to read those sliders out of the hand, and that's why I could never play baseball competitively in real life. My age, just stick to being awful at baseball on the PlayStation. Us as we speak. Uh, Owen won the count. Last pickoff attempt unsuccessful on Marino. Uh, Marino leading off and right, then Carson Mangan do up here, and that'll be fouled off towards the Redding dugout, and the count will be 0 and 2. Before I go down the rabbit hole here, here's the bat full batting order for the Medford Mustangs. It's Mike Piccolo leading it off in center field, followed by Dave Crohan at first. Jack Lombardo is in right. Justin Marino is at short. John Wright is at third. Carson Mangan is in left. Joe DeRazio is behind the plate. Travers Moody is at second. And Derek Marino rounds out the lineup as the DH. And you've seen Ryan Slow on the mound. He is not in the batting order. The 0-2 is a swing and a miss, but the stolen base attempt is successful for Marino. I heard a shout coming from the field, and I wasn't sure if it was wasn't sure if it was uh, the Redding coaches saying the runner was going, or if it was an, uh, one of the umpires calling a balk. But uh, the strikeout stands. Wright is retired. Second strikeout for Bayless. And a runner in scoring position now for the Mustangs, but Carson Mangan comes up empty there. 0-1. Oh Marino picks up the stolen base. Had a hit this early. Is obviously an upgrade over the loss to uh, Somerville the other day. You can watch that game live and on demand here on this here LSP YouTube channel, as you can with uh, almost all LSP video broadcasts. This will be a comebacker up the box and it gets through into center field for a base hit. Marino will be held at third. Mangan snuck it past the pitcher Bayless and the second baseman Chapin. With the shortstop Moore coming over for support. Nobody could make a play and a huge chance now for the Mustangs to get the opening salvo. Here's the catcher, Durazio. Durazio scored the only run in that loss to Somerville a few days ago for the Mustangs. As that's ball one. In that game, the Mustangs actually drew six walks, but ended up stranding six runners, four of them in scoring position. 
Runner goes on the grounder to second. The only play will be to first, and Medford gets the first run of the ball game. It is 1-0 Mustangs. Going with the hit and run to stay out of the double play, and Marino comes in the back door as Mangan gets to second. So an RBI for Durazio. And ground out to second. And Manga now in scoring position. And the count will be 1-0. and oh. Appreciate all you fine folks who have uh, found your way over to this, the working stream. Oh, boy. A throwback to second. And you can see... The second baseman, Chapin, go up high to try to haul in the high throw and then came down on top of Mangan. Mangan, obviously, a little shaken up there, able to get up quickly. And Roz is, or Roz is well, the head coach of the Mustangs, coming out to talk to the umpire. Um, obviously, not too much of an issue in in uh, Roz's mind, and Mangan is fine. The throw ended up getting into center field, but with Roz, I, I, I don't know if Roz is looking for maybe a interference call that might allow Mangan to get to third, but I don't know how you're going to be able to get to third that quickly with the center fielder backing up, even if the second baseman doesn't come down on top of you. 2-0 the count to Travers Moody. Moody, by the way, is the only uh, player on the Medford roster who is ineligible to pitch today. 3-0 now to Travers. Number nine hitter of the DH Marino on deck, and that is on the outside corner for strike one. Mangan getting his lead off of second with Chapin providing the watchful eyes. That's skied into right, and that'll be caught by the right fielder, Joe Cicerello, for the out. That retires the side. The Mustangs get one run on two hits and leave one through a buck and a half. one nothing. Meffa. The LSP store is now open. Get yourself a DVD or digital copy of most past LSP video broadcasts. We're on several different designs of sticker shirts or other merch, including some stuff with the aforementioned dog, Tina the Long Arena, on it, or some words I've probably said on this here YouTube channel over the years. LSP37.creator-spring.com to place work for merch. Game Daily PVP at gmail.com. Email yours truly for the game videos. Isaac Robinson, the cleanup hitter, to lead things off for the Reading Rockets, and he comes up empty for strike one. Robinson, Clark, and Cicerello do up here in the bottom of the second for Reading. Smokes this one into left field, but it looks like it's going to hang up 
And that'll be caught by the left fielder, Mangan, four out number one. 337 to left, 400 to dead center, and 301 down the right field line here at Lalasher Park, which for many years was the home of the uh, short season A affiliate of the Boston Red Sox, the Lowell Spinners, before the uh, essentially contraction of the minor leagues after the COVID pandemic. That's fouled off for strike one to the number five hitter, the catcher, Sam Clark. Upstairs, count will even at one. Covered a number of uh, spinners games from this park over the years uh, for the uh, Lowell Sun. Don't recall ever. It will be uh, smoked to second and picked up and thrown on the first for out number two. Um, don't recall ever covering a big name prospect that the Red Sox ever called up or whoever ever made their major league debut for another team uh, that came through uh, the Lasher, alas. I think I think the first game I covered was well at was after uh, after guys like Mookie and Benintendi had been called up. I don't think he even recalled the Jackie Bradley game, but on the inside corner for strike one. But hey, it was uh, it, it was fun to do. You know, great, great, uh, great environment. And uh, I will say this: as this is ground on a couple of hops to first, walled up there. By Dave Crohan, another one, two, three inning for Ryan Slow. Just finished with this thought. Uh, I'll say this. Um, I was probably the only person who understood and appreciated the random insertion of a Coach Z quote from uh, Homestar Runner uh, on the uh, on the scoreboard out there in left field. Great job indeed. One nothing Mustangs after two. Are you done with the sound called LSP? Of course you are. Then uh, follow and support us on the web. Linktree, Facebook, YouTube, PayPal, Greater Spring. Don't forget to subscribe. Sparkly subscribe button, go. Uh, Thumbtack and TCG player. You can also find our stuff and our magic cards there if you're into that sort of thing. All the cool kids are doing it. Derek Marino leading things off for the Medford Mustangs here in the top of the third. It'll be Marino, Piccolo, and Crohan due up. Rockets will send Michael Bayless back out there. I believe it's Bayless. Or no, it might not be number four. It's number 21. We got a change here for the Rockets. We'll get that to you in a second as Marino grounds out to begin the top of the third. And the new pitcher for the Rockets is going to be uh, Speaking of Marinos, Ryan Marino is the uh, new 
pitcher for the Rockets. So that closes the book on Michael Bayless, who went two innings, uh, allowed one run on two hits and struck out two. And that bounces to the plate for ball one to the leadoff hitter, Mike Piccolo. And it just occurred to me that I never read off the entire Reading starting lineup. So I'll get to you folks right now. It's Will Moore leading off at short, followed by Nate Vitarizzi uh, as DH, Alan Smirkle in center, Isaac Robinson at first, Sam Clark behind the plate, Joe Cicerello in right, Jack Chapin at second, Chris Hannafin is at third, and Tyler Breu rounds out the lineup in left. The count now is one and one to the Medford leadoff hitter, Mike Piccolo, 0 for 1, let off the ball game with a ground out to second. Marino with the 1-1. One, one. Fouled straight back into the screen. 1-2. Oh, giddy up on that one, and it hits the outside corner for strike three. Two up, two down. Here in the top of the third, Marino with the backwards K. Crohan, the first baseman. Nice little defensive play to end the bottom of the second. We'll take his cuts here in the top of the third. Grounded out to short is first time up. He's 0 for 1. That's a fair ball, hit it in front of the dish and nearly airmailed the throw to first, did Marino, but he's able to complete the 1-3 ground out and a very quick top of the third, 1-2-3. Go the Mustangs and through two and a half, still one nothing Mepha. Advertising opportunities are available on LSP. Sponsor our content for as little as $25 a spot. Whether you want to promote a business, product, or event, or send a message of support to a player, team, or coach, email yours truly, samfeelypvp at gmail.com for all the deets. Bottom third of the order due up here for the Rockets in the bottom of the third. Jack Chapin, Chris Hannafin, and Tyler Abreu. And just a reminder, folks, uh, our chat is subscribers only, but it's free to subscribe. Just click the subscribe button. We do it to uh, weed out the uh, spam bots and such. Uh, the membership option is a uh, membership thing. If you see it on our YouTube page, that's optional. Uh, it's five bucks a month, but uh, gets us some discounts on the uh, LSP uh, Creator Spring store. I got to update the uh, uh, codes on those, but uh, more benefits to come as well and helps us get some more treats for the dog. Other ways to support uh, us uh, in our future endeavors, which I, I'm sure you've seen so far throughout the night. So uh, two and one here to Chape in the second baseman for the Rockets. Pops this one up a mile high. And did he catch it? He did! Wow! Boy. Dave Crohan with a couple of nice defensive plays here. 
Those uh, those hops to him in the uh, for the last out of the bottom of the third. That can be tricky. If your coach is sticking you at first, because he because he needs a place to put you in the lineup, but. Made that one look easy, and then that one with the ball steering back towards fair territory. I'm pretty sure it would have landed foul and wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have allowed Chapin to reach, but don't want to, never want to give a batter another chance and able to haul that one in, twisting back towards fair territory. Crohan for the first out, and now Hannafin is behind 0 and 2. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Chris Hannafin, two up, two down here in the bottom of the third. Shadows completely cover the infield at this point. Still some sun reflecting off the batter's eye and streaking across the uh, inner part of the outfield, so not sure if uh, that'll affect the hitter's views. And at the moment, this is hitting to the gap in right center field. And there's the first base hit of the ball game for the Rockets. It comes from the number nine man, the left fielder, Tyler Abreu. So after eight straight retired to begin the ball game by slow, a little inside out swing into the, the gap, hit them where they ain't, and a base hit for Abreu. Gives the Rockets not just their first half, but their first base runner of the ball game. And the lineup turns over for Will Moore, the shortstop, and that's in the dirt for ball one. No advance by Tyler over there at first. Moore is 0 for 1, popped up to the catcher, leading off the bottom of the first. Back gets in there at the top of the zone. Strike one to even the count. First hit of the ball game for the Rockets. Has a tying run at first here in the bottom of the third with two outs. Coming to you from Lasher Park in Lowell for this game through the Medford Mustangs and the Reading Rockets. Sam Feely here with you. And that'll be inside for ball two. Two and one. Medford looking for their first win of the season. Redford, uh, Redding rather, after a nice little run in the uh, oh, Andy Pettit style pickoff move and that pulled the first baseman Crohan off the bag, much like the pickoff attempt on Mangan back in the second, pulled the second baseman uh, Chapin. Pulled him up and then came down on him, but everyone is okay in the end on both plays. Still two and one here, and a little bit of a slide step and a swing and a miss, strike two. Medford looking for their first win of the season. 0 and two, and a pending, uh, pending a completion of a uh, suspended game against Reading. It was 3-3 in the eighth. Pitches way outside, throw down to second, not nearly in time. A full count with a runner at second. Chance to bring home the tying run for the leadoff man, Moore. And he'll take ball four. So first and second with two out. Back-to-back -back batters reaching after the first eight were retired by Ryan Slow. Here's the DH, Nick Vitarisi, flew out to left his first time up. Vitarisi swings at the first pitch, pops it up, and it is caught on the run by the shortstop, Justin Marino, for the out that retires the side. So a two-out rally goes away with a whimper there as the Rockets get their first hit, but their first run will have to wait. one nothing Mustangs after three.
When I say LSP has something for everyone since 2011, I by God mean it. Sports, live events, pet sitting and walking. Check out Barron's and a whole lot more. Find all the information on our services on our Thumbtack page or check out our link tree, LSP37, or you can email yours truly, samfeelypbp at gmail.com so we can proceed to give you what you need. Jack Lombard to lead things off here in the top of the fourth for the Medford Mustangs, leading 1-0 over the Reading Rockets. Jack takes ball one. Lombardo, Marino, and Wright do up here in the top of the fourth. The heart of the order for the Mustangs. They want to try and get some cushion on this lead. Go on to first from third and... Quick out to begin the top of the fourth. So Lombardo is 0 for 2 after striking out looking his first time up. And here is Justin Marino. Had the first hit of this ball game leading off the top of the second and then came around to score what is so far the game's only run. Stealing. Second on his way around the bases, popped up on the infield. Oh, boy! Robinson came in towards the lip of the infield grass and backed up, and as he tried to close it, it popped out of the lip of uh, his glove, and he dropped the snow cone, and that'll be an E3. And Marino is aboard for the second time tonight. And here is John Wright. Can he make Redding pay for the error? Struck out swinging his first time up. And by the way, when I was talking about the uh, pickoff attempt last inning, comparing it to the pickoff attempt second, the second inning, it was Mangan who got landed on on that pickoff attempt. It was uh, it wasn't Marino. If I had said Marino, I apologize. Speaking of stolen base attempts, Marino is going to pick up his second steal. He is two for two now in that department on the game, and he is in scoring position with a hitter's count to the third baseman, John Wright, 2-0. Huge chance here for the Mustangs to tack on to their slim lead, top of the fourth. Medford against Redding. Here's a 2-0 and a cut and a miss, 2-1. As Marino inches off of second, here is the 2-1 now. And that hit the outside corner, 2-2. Two two. Ryan Marino still out there for the Rockets after Bayless went the first two and allowed one run on two hits with two strikeouts. This will be popped up over towards the dugout, and it lands, and... Disaster averted as catcher Clark is able to just calmly take a couple steps down into the Medford dugout and not be any worse for the wear. So it remains two and two.
with Carson Mangan due up next. So from 2-0 to 2-2 oh to two and two in the pitch, inside, and that'll make it a full count. One out in the inning already. You put right on, at least put the double play in order. I think it would be at two outs already, but unfortunately the ball popping out of the first baseman's glove allowed Justin Marino to reach on what was otherwise a pretty basic pop-up, but then again, at twilight here, would I would under you know it's understandable if Robinson may have misjudged it, judged the ball coming down if he lost in the late light or whatever. But there is the walk. Ball four, first and second, one out for the Mustangs. So here's Mangan as right reaches as the first walk allowed by Redding pitching tonight. Mangan one for one with a single and he comes up empty there, 0 and 1. But remember that the play that drove home Marino for the game's only run so far wasn't Mangan's hit. It was a uh, it was a ground out by Durazio on a hit and run. Mangan got the ball into the Outfield for the base hit, but it wasn't hit hard enough to allow Marino to score. They'll go to third for the force, and they got him. The 6-5 force. Had to figure they had no shot to turn the double play, so get the lead runner. It works. Fielder's choice, 6-5. Marino is retired, right up to second, two down, and here is Durazio. Uh... Ground out isn't going to do anything here. Got to get it past the defense for a base hit to score a run in this situation. He takes up and away for ball one. The 1 0 into the gap in left center field. That'll get down for a base hit. One run will score. Here comes the throw to the cutoff man, airmail. It's a double for Joe DeRazio. 2 0. So, right scores, Mangan to third. DeRazio with the RBI double. He's driven in both runs for the Mustangs tonight. And now here's Travers Moody. Inside corner, strike one. Didn't think he was standing that close to the play, but he backed up away from the pitch as it was coming in and got the bad news. A little front door cutter there. That'll be high for ball one. Count will even at one. Edford feeling pretty good right now, up 2 0. Remember, Reading 15 and 7 last year. Uh, uh, saw their postseason run come to an end at the hand of St. Mary's after defeating Pope Francis. This is flared down the right field line to foul territory, and it is not caught. A good effort by the right fielder, Joe Cicerello, but he might have gotten tripped up on the back of the bullpen mound there. Otherwise, it looked like he had a beat on it. Ends up being strike two. With two outs here in the top of the fourth, one and two the count. On the outside corner, strike three called. So as far as Redding is concerned, they Get the out they wanted anyways, but not before an unearned run scores. And we are halfway home, 2-0. Medford on top of Redding.
The LSP store is open. Get yourself a DVD or digital copy of most past LSP video broadcasts or one of several different designs of stickers, shirts, or other merch, including some stuff with my dog, Tina the Long Arena, on it, or some words I've probably said over these on these broadcasts over the years. LSP37.creator-spring.com for merch. You can email yours truly, samfeelypbp at gmail.com for game videos. All right, we will go to the bottom of the fourth. And Redding now trailing Medford 2-0 from Latcher Park in Lowell, Mass. Merkel, Robinson, and Clark, the heart of the order, due up for the Rockets here in the home half of the fourth. And that'll be up and in for ball one. Slow back out there for his fourth inning of work. Merkel struck out swinging his first time up to end the bottom of the first. That's in there for strike one to even the count. Two strikeouts, one hit, one walk, and no runs allowed so far by Ryan Slow, but he's now behind the sophomore, number three hitter, Merkel, two and one. And you know it's a good sign of what uh, your coach thinks of you if he's putting a sophomore in the three spot in the batting order, but that's exactly where David Blanchard has stuck Merkel here. And he drew a five pitch walk. Ball goes all the way to the backstop, and Merkel will just take first base as he is entitled and not try to push it any further. So leadoff walk for Merkel, and here's Robinson. I'm sure he'd love to uh, make amends for that error that led to the second run of the game for Medford. Fouls that one off for strike one. Robinson 0 for 1 with a fly out to left. That's the first time, by the way, that Redding has gotten the leadoff man on tonight. Medford has all also only gotten the leadoff man once. That was in the second when Marina reached and then eventually came around to score. Smacked into left field, that'll get down for a base hit. A wide turn at second, but Merkel will hold there. First and second, nobody out to begin the bottom of the fourth for the Rockets. This will mark the first time that either side has gotten the first two runners in an inning aboard. First and second, nobody out for the catcher, Sam Clark. Lefty against lefty. Here's the pitch. Down away, and it skips to the backstop. The tying run now in scoring position for the Rockets. Let's see, corner infielders coming in, but 
The second baseman and shortstop staying back here. Clark grounded out to second his first time up, back in the second. Lace and caught it, short throw back to second, double play! Six four double play, and then just like that, just the runner at third with two down. Here's Cicerello, high for ball one. The conventional thought is that in a situation like that, you bring the entire infield in towards the lip of the infield grass. If you do that there, I think it gets over. I think the ball gets over Marino's head, and we have a tie ball game. One and one, the count to Cicerello grounded out to the first baseman, his first time up to end the second. Take strike two, one and two. We started this game at 618. We are just about to the hour mark. And the pitch. Skied into right field, misjudged initially, but then making up the ground and hauling it in is the right fielder, Jack Lombardo, for the out. That retires the side, and Ryan Slow, slow breaths, gets out of the two-on, nobody-out jam, unscathed. We're through four, still 2 nothing Meffa. Are you down with the sound called LSP? I am certainly not down with the sound of the song that's playing on the PA right now. But uh, follow and support LSP on the web. Linktree, Facebook, YouTube, PayPal, Creator Spring, LSP37. Uh, find all the details on our services on Thumbtack. And buy our Magic the Gathering cards on TCG Player if you're into that sort of thing. It's the right thing to do. Derek Marino, Mike Piccolo, and Dave Crowhand will lead things off here in the top of the fifth against the new Rockets Noodle. It'll be Ethan Lebovich at strike one, 0 and 1. Marino, 0 for 1 with a ground out to second. That puts the Derek, uh, that closes the book on Ryan Marino. Two innings, one unearned run, one hit, one walk, and two Ks. Went around, said the home plate umpire, and is 0-2. Derek Morris looking back like, are you sure about that, man? Did I say Derek Morris? <laughs> Derek Norris. That flies to Derek Norris, the former Padres and A's catcher. I, I, 
I think one of the things that's messed me up is I've been talking about a lot of like just rough stories coming out of MLB lately, and then I just start meshing major league players into my head. But yeah, anyways, O2 irrelevant. I know. Still 0-2. A couple nice spoils here by Marino as Lobovich in the game now, the third pitcher of the game for the Rockets. And strike three. One up, one down. So Lobovich, a uh, nice little introduction on his part anyways, to the Medford offense. He gets to Marino, and Derek's now 0 for 2. And the line turns over for Piccolo, who himself is 0 for 2. Ground out to second, and a strikeout looking. Just three hits so far for the Mustangs, and two for the Rockets. A little nubber down the third base line, and he's swept foul by Lobovich for strike one. See Piccolo duck as that one was coming towards the plate and ended, ended up on the on the opposite batter's box. I don't know many pitches that are just that are that sharp with their break, but in the end, it's one and one. So again, three hits for the Mustangs and two for the Rockets. Only extra base hit has been by Joe DeRazio, who is driven in both runs for the Mustangs. Count is now two and one to the Medford leadoff hitter. That is downstairs. Count will be three and one. Two runs, three hits, no errors, and three left for the Mustangs. At the top of the zone, that'll fill the count. No runs, two hits, one error, and two left, three left rather, for the Rockets. I'll be down low. Always like to see the leadoff man draw a walk. So Piccolo reaches base for the first time. That'll be the second walk drawn by the Mustangs tonight. Here's the first baseman, Dave Crohan. Some nice defensive plays from the Mustangs' first baseman tonight. Fortunately at the plate, he is just 0 for 2. Ground out to short and a comebacker. On the outside corner for strike one. Top of the fifth here at Lasher Park on Patriots Day, Jackie Robinson Day, Marathon Monday, Tax Day, whatever you want to call it here in Lowell, Mass. Campus of UMass Lowell. That's a pitch high. Throw down to second. Got him. First unsuccessful steal of the game for the Mustangs as Piccolo is thrown out on a one and one pitch. Nabbed by the catcher, Sam Clark. So one and one with the bases empty now and two down. This will be fouled off the other way and the count will be one and two. Swing and a miss, tied him up inside. Hide inside, in fact. 
And we are through four and a half, still two nothing Mustangs. Advertising opportunities are available on LSP. Sponsor our content for as little as $25 a spot. Whether you want to promote a business, product, or event, or send a message of support to a player, team, or coach. Email yours truly, samfeelypbp at gmail.com for all the deets. Bottom of the fifth, and it'll be the bottom third of the order due up for the Rockets. Jack Chapin, Chris Hannafin, and Tyler Abreu. And Ryan Slow back out there for the Mustangs is ahead of Chapin. 0-1. And this will be flared into right field, <laughs> not even that far. Just on the lip of the... Outfield grass and the infield dirt hauled in by the second baseman for a relatively painless out number one. Been a little bit of a test the last couple of innings for Slow. He actually retired the first eight in order before Tyler Abreu got the first hit of the ball game for the Rockets with two outs in the bottom of the third, the number nine hitter. Then stole second. Then Will Moore walked to set up first and second. But a pop-up off the bat of Viterese to short put an end to that rally. 2-0. Hannafin struck out swing his first time up. Only two strikeouts tonight for Slow. And that is the most recent one. Only got Hannafin for the second out of the third. Hannafin flares this one. Fair ball! Wow! Hannafin wasn't that urgent out of the box, really. He's going down the line. There was some that, – that was not at all for sure a foul ball. And it's a base hit. Line drive of the box score. Hannafin's aboard. One on, one out. In a two-run game, you just have to keep the mindset that, you know, you're in the position Tyler Brayu is. You're the tying run. Just keep the line moving. Bray, had the, again, had the first hit of the ball game for the Rockets, but he comes up empty here. 0-1. Oh Fourth inning. Walk to Merkel, a single by Robinson, and then a wild pitch at second and third. Nobody out. Line drive, double play, 6-4 uh, to Sam, uh, off the bat of Sam Clark. Helped squelch that rally, though. It's one and one. So for the third consecutive inning, a runner on for the Rockets. Down and in for ball two. Two and one. Bring the number nine hitter. Coming the first base runner of the game for the Rockets. And entering play just one for six with a run scored. But that also an RBI and a double. It's now three and one. With the leadoff man, Will Moore, due up next. 
Getting his lead at first is Hannafin. Ball four, and for the third consecutive inning, two on for the Rockets. They certainly have not made it easy on slow the last couple of innings. Slow has found his way out of Dodge in the third and the fourth. Can he work his magic again here? Here's Moore who's 0 for 2 with a pop up to the catcher and a walk. Inside corner, strike one. The Rockets have left three runners on base tonight. Two of them in scoring position. Swing and a miss. Beautiful change up there. 0 and 2. The tying run is at first in the person of Tyler Abreu. Go ahead run at the plate in the person of Will Moore, the shortstop. And the leadoff hitter for the Rockets. That's low. We already saw a wild pitch put runners at second, third earlier this game for the Rockets, but able to keep that one in front of him was Durazio. No advance by the runners, and the count is one and two. I just tried to chill a little bit here. Some breeze coming in here in the press box. Outside corner, strike three called. The umpire might have lost count of what strike that was because he pointed as if it was just strike one or two, but that was, in fact, strike three. And a huge strike out there on the outside corner. Moore is rung up, third strikeout for Slow. And here's the DH, Nate Vitarizzi. All right. Found that one off for a moment. I thought we would have had someone else in the DH slot. It looked like 21. That would have been Ryan Marino's number. It is, in fact, Vitarisi. But Vitarisi fouls out the last one off for strike one. It's 0-1 to Vitarisi, who has flied out to left and popped out to short. Slow delivers, flared foul up onto the concourse. The count is 0-2. Hannafin at second, Abreu at first. Long look at second, but now the second baseman retreats and the pitch way high for ball one. Low, looking back and forth and comes home with it. Popped up, where though, <laughs> catcher lost it and it landed down here against the backstop on the front row, uh, in play on the front row of the bleachers. He'll do it again at one and two. Again. Stuff can be tricky sometimes in the twilight. One, two again. Here it is. Into center field on a line, and he couldn't make the catch. It kicks over to the right fielder. One run scores. Here comes the second runner to tie the game. He is safe. Now over to third, and it goes up the line. Bobbled down the line there by the left fielder, Mangan, but this game is tied. Wow. What a sequence. Perhaps some indecision in center by Piccolo on whether he wanted to try and make a diving catch 
or just play it on a hop. Actually kicked out of his glove over towards the right fielder and the relay to home to try and get the tying run in Abreu all the way from first. That throw was actually on the money, but it popped out of the catcher's mitt for Durazio. Then he tried to get the runner at third, our batter, Vitorizzi. And folks, we're back to where we started after all that. This is smoked into center field, and that will get down to give the Rockets the lead. First pitch swinging for Alex Merkel, drives home the go-ahead run. Ball is way high and not even a throw down to second as Merkel picks up the stolen base. Robinson one for two with a fly out to left and a single. Down low for ball two. Been a interesting night at the office for Isaac. A base hit, though, could erase a lot of the woes. Foul ball, strike one. Had that error in the fourth on on a pop up. Eventually led to Medford's second run. In the bottom half, he did pick up a base hit, but got doubled off on that line drive to short. We got here at two and one. That's a ball, and it goes all the way to the backstop. And up to third now. Goes Merkel on the wild pitch. I don't know, man. Do you just put Isaac on at this point? I feel like that should be an option. Well, instead they pitch to him. It's a full count. He fouls that one off of the dish. Full count. Robinson smacks that one again. Down the line, but foul. Putting together the uh, scoring here, and I accidentally put Vitorisi's, the scoring of Vitorisi's play in Robinson's spot. So Vitorisi with a two-run double and then scoring on the RBI single by Merkel. Oh, it glances underneath the third baseman's glove, and in to score is Merkel. Well, he can give an RBI on that one. It should be a E5. Miles Robinson to reach. Ball one to Sam Clark. Eighth man to bat in the inning for Redding. 0 for 2, ground out to second and hit into that 6-4 double play. 
2 and 0. Oh. Does feel like Slow is starting to lose it here. Might be his last batter. Either way, Roz's uh, mindset here maybe keep him in at least to face the lefty. I think there's another lefty on deck too, though. Maybe Cicerello, the right fielder. But uh, Much, how much longer you can justify keeping slow in the game. Now it's three and one. The only player on the Medford roster who's ineligible to pitch tonight is Travers Moody. So who do you go to next if you're Roz? Another misjudge of a pop-up, and it drops in foul territory behind the right fielder Lombardo, and everybody's safe. Wow. Juked me out, too, with Clark running the whole way, which is what you're supposed to do for what it's worth. With two outs especially. But is now second and third. It right fielder Lombardo lost it, but he didn't think it was his ball anyways. I don't think he thought it was going that far. That's in the dirt for ball one and gets another lefty up, Cicerello. He is 0 for 2 and the ground out to first, the fly out to right. Four to our score. Redding with all four of their runs here in this bottom of the fifth. And looking to tack on more with two runners in scoring position. That is on the outside corner for strike one. In our Who You Got poll, we had 83% picking Redding. And that was at a time when Medford was up 2 0 and Slow had gotten out of a couple of jams, but not. Tonight, one run scores, here comes another. Couldn't get out of this third jam here in the fifth. And it is a six spot now in the bottom of the fifth for the Rockets. Two run single for Cicerello. That's going to do it for Ryan Slow on the mound, but it looks like he's going to stay in the game in the field. And get the full breakdown of the change. It looks like it was just going to be slow in right and... Uh, Gonna be a straight swap of uh, Slow and Lombardo, I believe. Make sure that is number six on the mound. It does look that way. Though the way Medford's jerseys look from the front, it does look like uh, the six and the eight bunch up pretty easily. But it is a righty, not a lefty. And it is gonna, in fact, gonna be Lombardo in on the mound and Slow moving to right. So just a straight position swap for the so slow was never in the batting order to begin with but uh, it's going to put Lombardo on the mound and again slow and right and that'll close the book on uh, slow after four and two thirds innings did not allow a base runner through the first two and two thirds retire two and two thirds retire the first eight and a Abreu singled and more walked he got it out of that jam with a pop-up off the bat of Vitorisi. Merkel and Robinson reached to begin the fourth. Got it out of that jam with a line drive double play, 6-4, and then a flat to right off the bat of Cicerello. 
Chapin pop up to second to begin this inning. Hannafin singled and Abreu scored. Then he struck out more, but Vitarisi's double tied the game. And the Rockets offense has tacked on four more since. And that puts an end to the night for Ryan Slow. Now, needless to say, this is taking a while is because uh, Lombardo coming in from the field. It's not like he's been warming up in the bullpen. I wonder if putting Lombardo on the mound, bring him in from right, will help with his confidence. Because we've seen a couple of uh, tough breaks in right for Jack defensively tonight. You can be a little more comfortable at this stage of the game on the mound. But, of course, now that puts the onus on slow for those balls. And he is, in fact, in right field. So, again, just a straight position swap of slow now in right and Lombardo on the mound. And it will be Chapin to be the ninth. Uh, actually, take that back. We batted around. Chapin, the 10th batter of the inning. Remember, 10 come to bat when you bat around, not 9. Since Scully said it, it must be true. Uh, we got a bit of a hold up here, though, as the base umpire checking, I guess, some of the equipment on Lombardo, but nothing beyond that so here we go runner on first two down six runs home here in the bottom of the fifth for the rockets and the first pitch to chapin grounder underneath the glove of the second baseman into right center field for a base hit and going first to third is cicerello chapin Began this inning with a pop-up to second and said, I'm not ending this inning with any out to anyone. Picks up a base hit. And now here is Chris Hannafin. Well, he had the lefty slow starting, but now you got the righty to face some lefties as this is fouled off for strike one to Chris Hannafin. One for two with a strikeout, a single, and a run scored. Six runs on six hits, a walk, and an error in this inning. For the Rockets, pickoff attempt at first, but back safely is Chapin. Quite the turn of events here in the bottom of the fifth. At Lasher Park. This is laced into left field. Out of the reach of the shortstop. Down for a base hit. In comes another run. 7-2. Hannafin with his second hit of the inning. Here's Tyler Abreu. He is one for one with a single, a walk, a steal, and a run scored, and he takes outside. Ball one. Lombardo looks back at second and comes home with it. And this will be flared into right field. First chance defensively for slow, but it'll just land in foul territory over there by the bullpen wall. And it will be strike one, one and one. First and second with 
two down here in the bottom of the fifth. Seven runs. All scored with two outs, by the way, for the Rockets here. Two and one. Chapin led off this inning, popping up to second. Then Hannafin singled and Abreu walked, but then the strikeout by Moore. But again, seven runs now with two outs. And that is up and in, ball three. Abreu batting for the second time this inning and the 12th batter of this inning for the Rockets. Reaches that one and fouls it off. Full count. And gentlemen, start your engines as Chapin and Hannafin will be off with this pitch. Lombardo peering in for the sign, comes set, payoff pitch. Here <laughs> it is. Oh, the Nestor Cortez hesitation move. Got him for the third out of the inning. It ain't over yet. It ain't over till it's over. Mustangs, though, have to start scoring some runs in bunches and quickly. We are through five, and it's a much different game now. 7-2, Rockets on top. When I say LSP has something for everyone since 2011, I by God mean it. Sports, live events, pet sitting and walking, tech help, errands, and a whole lot more. You can find all the details on our services on our Thumbtack page or go to Linktree LSP37 or email yours truly. Sam Feely, PBP at gmail.com so we can proceed to give you what you need. Now we will go to the top of the sixth. And it has been a long wait for Ethan Le, Ethan Lebovich to uh, come back out onto the mound for the Rockets. Will that affect him here in the top of the sixth as the Mustangs are now down to their final six outs after leading for most of this game, 2-0. Lombardo, who is now the pitcher, takes strike one from Lobovich. Lombardo is 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out to third. Off the end of the bat, the other way, mishandled by the first baseman throw. Not in time, and... Lombardo went way out, almost into the outfield grass, and he got thrown out at second. Just following, just running through the bag and then turned and saw the ball go over towards the front row of the bleachers, but stayed in play. And when he had made his turn, he was basically all the way out into the outfield grass. And the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. That was not... A straight line, unfortunately, for Lombardo. And he is out for the first out of the top of the sixth. Here is the shortstop, Justin Marino, who there have been a few pitches tonight that some of the Medford batters have tried to duck out of the way of it and never really came close to them. That was just a bad read out of the, uh, 
out of the pitcher's hand or anything or lo looked like it was going to come in from there off the out of the pitcher's hand. But now that it's dark, it, it shouldn't be a matter of trying to decipher it from the batter's eye. It's one and one. It's about as dark green as you can get for that center field wall. That one definitely came in up top, and that'll be two and one. Are you daring him to do that? I don't know. And that'll be booted by the shortstop. It'll kick it a left field and tough hop, uh, hard hit, smoked off the bat of Marino. And that should be a pretty not the most not the most routine play for a shortstop to make, but it's one you figure Moore should make. That should be an E6. Well, the errors piling up here in the last couple of innings for both sides, but. More importantly for the Mustangs, they have a base runner as the count will be 1-0. and oh. Here is Wright, who is 0 for 1 with a strikeout, a walk, and a run scored. Pops this one up into center field, and that will be caught on the run for out number two. The outfielder's playing very shallow here for the Medford ba Medford batters and uh, Merkel nearly got burned being in the position he was there, but able to catch up to it for an F8 and the Mustangs down their final out here at the top of the sixth. So the runner at first, that being Marina after reaching on the E6, and here is Karsten Mangan. Smacks that one up the middle, cut off at short, and an easy step on the second base bag for more, a much more routine play than the last one he had to make. And the side is retired. So we are through five and a half, seven two. Rockets. The LSP store is open. Get yourself a DVD or digital copy of most past LSP video broadcasts or one of several different designs of stickers, shirts, or other merch, including some stuff with my dog, Tina the Long Arena on it, or some words I've probably said on this here YouTube channel over the years. LSP37.creator-spring.com for the place to order for merch. And SanFeelyPVP at gmail.com for game videos. Will Moore to lead things off here in the bottom of the sixth for the Rockets. Touchdown and the extra point in the bottom of the sixth for Redding. And he gets plunked with the very first pitch. Top third of the order due up here for the Rockets and Moore reaches base for the second time and both times have been without the aid of a hit. Walk back in the uh, third and the hit by pitch now, so he's 0 for 2 with the walk and the hit by pitch. Can't complain about a 500 OBP, though. I certainly wouldn't. 
Her pickoff attempt nearly pulls the first baseman Crohan off the bag, but able to haul it in. The leadoff man aboard for the Rockets. Here's Vitarisi as that pops out of the catcher's glove, but no advance by Moore. And the count will be 1-0. and oh. You know, running yourself into outs, uh, or, or try to avoid running yourself into outs, cuts both ways in games like these. Saw uh, Lombardo reach after the error at first, but then tried to gun it to second to try and maybe spark a rally. But what you need is base runners, and you don't want to, you know, give away outs offensively or defensively. You ended up, ended up getting throwing, get it, ended up getting thrown out. That error at short allowed Marino to reach. I don't think Lombardo's going to try to go to third on that play. We at least have first and second, nobody out. But that was not the case. It ended up being just one of our first one out after Marino reached, and then a fly out and a fielder's choice later. The Rockets are three outs, three defensive outs away from their second win of the season. Five pitches, all balls, and two on, nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth for the Rockets. So here's Merkel, strikeout in the first, walk in the third, and a single, and an RBI, and a stolen base in the fifth. Smokes this one into center field. I gotta be honest. I know I'm, I know I'm jumping the gun with these, uh, with, with these calls of, you know, these balls getting smoked into the outfield when it ends up, you know, not traveling very far. But forgive me, this it, it sounds real good off the bat, but uh, ends up not getting much further than the infield. It's a routine pop up there. So Merkel's one for three now, and here's Robinson. There's a guy I'm rooting for here. Been a, a couple errors defensively, and then you know got doubled off in that line drive when Redding was still trailing. At the plate, though, you know he has a single and reached on an error that allowed a run to score. I'd love to see him come up with a big hit, extra base hit, into the gap here and bring home a couple. There's a grounder the other way, and it is good enough for a base hit. Will it be good enough for a run, though? Here comes the throw, not in time. And to third on the play, too, goes Vitarisi. Eight two is our score. Runners at the corners, one out for Clark. Two run double, uh, uh, RBI double riders last time. Is this an RBI double? Let me go make sure I got this right. <laughs> Sorry, folks. No, it, was, it was a double, but didn't bring home anything. Vitarisi at third, Robinson at first. In an inning like that, it's hard not to default to saying RBI double. <laughs> Just a merry-go-round was fired up. And remember, all seven of the runs that Redding scored in the bottom of the fifth were with two outs. Medford was one out away. Ryan Slow was one out away from getting out of a third consecutive two on, two runners on jam. But things snowballed for the Mustangs in the bottom of the fifth. Center fielder 
Piccolo might have been in between on how he was going to play a line drive hit towards his w hit towards him in uh, with two outs. On the outside corner, strike three called. Clark is down on strikes. That allowed Redding to tie the game, and the floodgates opened from there. Here's Joe Cicerello, the right fielder. One for three with a ground out to first, a fly out to right, a single, two RBIs, and a run scored. Outside for ball one. In the top of the seventh, the Mustangs will have the bottom third of the order due up, DeRazio, Moody, and Marino. Vitarizzi at third. Robinson at first. Into right field and down for a base hit. In comes another run. Robinson's on his way to third. He will get there standing up. Vitarisi scores, third ribby of the game for Cicerello. Robinson at third. Here's Chapin. Swings at the first pitch, grounds it to short underhand to second for the force. That retires the side. Two more runs for the Rockets in the bottom of the sixth, and now it is closing time for Redding, 9-2. Are you down with the sound called LSP? Then follow and support us on the web. Linktree, Facebook, YouTube, PayPal, Creator Spring, LSP37. Like, share, and subscribe, and all that jazz. Thumbtack is where you can find all the information on our services, and you can buy our Magic the Gallery cards on TCG Player if you're into that sort of thing. Joe DeRazio to lead things off here in the top of the seventh for the Mustangs. And Ethan Lobovich back out there for his third inning of work. Third pitcher of the game for Redding after Bayless went the first two and Marino went the next two. So it looks like it's going to be Lobovich picking up the win unless the Mustangs pull off one of the greater comebacks in the history of organized baseball. And a good start anyway, since DeRazio is up in the count 2-0 on Lobovich. 3-0. DeRazio is 1-2 for two and has driven in both Mustang runs. His ground out to second brought in Justin Marino in the second. His double in the fourth brought home John Wright. 3-0 the count, taken all the way. Strike one, he'll now go to work. Seven run, bottom of the fifth, the difference in this one for the Redding Rockets. Scoring all seven of those runs with two outs in the inning. And this close, too, as that is strike two, as DeRazio took a, several steps towards first, but 
I'm of the opinion that you should never take any steps towards first until the umpire says take your base. Even if the ball is literally in the next zip code. Because you never know when Angel Hernandez is behind the plate. Am I right? Oh. Paul Skeens is coming for his job in case you haven't seen some of the clips of Skeens challenging ball calls and getting them reversed to strikes down in AAA. Oh, man, he's going to be so good. I, wa I want to see the first game. <laughs> the first game that Paul Skeens bitches with Angel Hernandez behind the plate. That is pay-per-view worthy television right there. 1 and 0 the count to Travers Moody back to uh, the task at hand. And it's actually not Travers Moody, my mistake. We have a sub here for Travers. It is, in fact, Alex Giogas in Travers' spot. One and two the count to Giogas. That is a foul ball. Game's one and two. Grazi are reaching with a leadoff walk. Derek Marino still in the on-deck circle in his usual spot in the lineup, though. So Moody's night ends... 0 for 2 with a fly out to right and a strikeout looking. And this will be fouled off the dish. Remains 1 and 2. Runner not being held at all at first base. And the pitch. Misses inside, even the count at two. Now seven runs with all with two outs in the bottom of the fifth that have helped propel the Rockets to this big lead, plus two more in the bottom of the sixth. And they were this close, were the Mustangs, to uh, to getting out of that jam unscathed. But a tough play in center field to open the floodgates for the Rockets. That'll be foul. I wonder how differently the rest of that inning could have been could have played out if they pulled slow one or two batters sooner. But the logic of keeping him in is there as this is laced in the left field for a base hit. And Giogas in his first at bat picks up a single to make it first and second with nobody out. You can understand why, as I said at the time, you, they were keeping slow in there. Couple of lefties. Want the lefty lefty matchup in those situations. Marino fouls this one off. He's 0 for 2 with a ground out to second and a strikeout. Alas, uh, Redding overcame the lefty lefty advantages and kept pouring it on as that is a strike. 0 and 2 to Marino. Four hits tonight for the Mustangs. That hit just now by Giogas. That'll be one and two. Was the first hit since DeRazio's RBI double back in the fourth that gave the Mustangs that 2 nothing lead. Into left field in foul territory. It is dropped! Should have been an easy out number one there. That 
That'll be an error. It'll be an E5 on Hannafin to keep the at-bat alive. Do it again, a one-two. Fouled off. We, I was gonna say, runner on second, Durazio made a break for it at third, thinking that it was a swing and a miss and, and a pass ball or something, but was just a foul off, so it remains one and two. Inside for ball two. Only the longer the at-bat goes with the number nine hitter, the more frustrated he can become as a pitcher. Tyler Abreu, the number nine hitter for the Rockets, got the first base hit of the game tonight for the hosts tonight, Redding, but one for two with a single, a stolen base, a walk and a run scored. Listen, you can't afford to be an easy out as a number nine hitter. That's on the outside corner, strike three called. Despite the good battle by Marino, he's down on strikes for the second time. But you can't go into it an at-bat with a number nine hitter thinking it's gonna be a breeze either. Austin Bryce is gonna grab a bat and Hit for Mike Piccolo here with one out in the top of the seventh. Bryce, the senior captain, standing in from the right side. Off the end of the bat and foul for strike one. Dribbler at the plate, and it'll be 0-2. Mentioned that Moody's hit, uh, excuse me, Jogas's hit was the first for the Mustangs since the RBI double by DeRazio back in the fourth. Had a couple other guys reach base in, uh, in between. This will be grounded to the left side, bobbled at third. Only play will then be to first. And they got him. The bobble there at third made it closer than maybe it should have been, but Price is retired, 5-3. To third goes Durazio, to second goes Giogas. And the Mustangs are down to their final out, and it is in the person of... Will Crohan, it is. Dave Crohan with two runners in scoring position, but the Mustangs down to their final out. And you can see here down at third that uh, Durazio's trying to maybe induce a balk out of Lobovich. If you're Lobovich, can't allow him to do that with this big a lead. Just pretend he doesn't exist. His run does not matter in the grand scheme of things. We're going to have the same discussion during the Somerville game when, uh, actually, was it? Was it DeRazio was doing the same thing? Yeah, it was. To the uh, Somerville pitcher at the time, Noah Brown, but he eventually scored, but not on any kind of balk, but the Mustangs are down their final strike. Little grounder to the right side. First baseman Robinson's got it. And that will do it. The Rockets win 9-2. to two. Crohan grounds out three unassisted to put an end to this one. And in a game that took two hours and one minute, the winning pitcher is Ethan Lobovich. The losing pitcher is Ryan Slow. The final totals for the Reading Rockets, nine runs on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10, 11 hits. Nine runs, 11 hits on two errors and one, two, three, four, five runners left on base. For the Medford Mustangs, it was two runs on four hits, uh, three errors, and two, four, five, six runners left on base. Medford is now 0-3. Redding is 2-1. and one. Great experience, I'm sure, for uh, both these teams to play under the lights here at Lasher Park, a wonderful facility, and even without the spinners, uh, still gets uh, plenty of use. It's still a very important part of the uh, New England baseball community as the home of the UMass Little River Hawks and uh, other uh, high school and college events here in the area. Great experience for me, doing my uh, first, yeah, I believe this is actually my first broadcast from this very booth where I worked uh, several uh, spinners games over the and uh, UMass Lowell and other uh, high school games for the Sun over the years, but uh, did PA for a UMass Lowell game a couple weeks ago down a couple booths to my right, but uh, great to call a game here from this wonderful facility. Let's do it again some other time, huh? So with that said, there's been a presentation of LSP, something for everyone for over a decade. Copyright 2024, unauthorized distribution of any portion of this broadcast without the express written permission of LSP is strictly prohibited. A reminder that you can sponsor future LSP content for as little as $25 per spot or hire us to work your next live event or whatever else you may need us to do that we can do. We can do a lot. Check out all the information on Thumbtack and Linktree. LSP37 or email yours truly for all the information. Sam Feely, pbp at gmail.com. Don't forget, you can also uh, buy some merch from our Creator Spring store or uh, email me directly if you want to purchase a digital copy or DVD copy of most past LSP video broadcasts. And be sure to follow, like, share, subscribe, whatever the kids are saying these days. Linktree, Facebook, YouTube, PayPal, Creator Spring, LSP37, Thumbtack, TCG Player the right thing to do. Once again, the final score from Lasher Park on the campus of UMass Lowell in, shockingly enough, Lowell, Massachusetts. It is the Reading Rockets 9 and the Medford Mustangs 2. For all my riding friends here at Lasher, my name is Sam Feely, reminding you forever and always, freelance isn't free. Thanks for tuning in. Fresh for 2024. Suckas. Love you, Katrina. Party hard, Caitlin.